Hey guys, Rich Pollution, and I went to PAX this weekend. It's 8, 8 a.m., and I am about to have breakfast because I'm at my parents' house. What are you doing? Going to See? Go I'm at my parents' house. Who are you doing this way? Nobody yet. One hour away from PAX East. It is 8.30 and um, yeah, we're running late, but we'll be there. So, PAX East. There is a lot to be said about PAX East. Other than PAX East, the next big video game conference is E3, which who the hell can afford to go to E3? I mean, hell, I'd go if I could, but I can't afford it. So, I've never been to PAX East, um, but I happened to be home, working from home one day, when the tickets went on sale, and one of my friends let me know that the tickets were on sale. So I quickly ran online, and I got Saturday tickets. At first, I thought this was a blessing. Um, later on, I found out otherwise, but Saturday was the easiest day because I didn't have to get work off, and my wife was able to go with me if she took work off. Well, PAX East was PAXED. Um, so like I said, PAX East was packed. Lines were probably one hour to two hours if you wanted to go to what I call the big three, which is Sony, Nintendo, and uh, Xbox, or Microsoft. Um, however, there was a lot more to do there than just the big three. There was tabletop games. That as well was packed. You couldn't even find a table. My wife and I actually grabbed a board game that was for two people, and we went to go find a table, and believe it or not, we could not find a table, so we just put the board game back. Um, however, they did have a looking for groups, which was kind of cool. So the idea of PAX is, you know, you meet up with other people who have similar interests, whether it be video games, Dungeons and Dragons, or board games, or anything along those lines, um, and you meet up and you play games, you discuss games, you talk about what's new and upcoming. Well, you'd think that with that mentality, looking for groups would work well? Well, no, they put it on Twitter. Um, so the way to look for groups was if you went on Twitter and you wrote at PAX looking for group or LFG or something along those lines, and you prayed that someone else was going to go online and find that or reply to that, and you would end up playing a game with them. Um, so my wife and I were, all right, let's go look for a group. So we whip out my phone, we go on Twitter. Twitter, right, and we're looking, and the last post on that was 22 hours from the day before. I don't understand how that's supposed to work, but whatever, beside the point. They did have these giant cones that said LFG, which I'm assuming is looking for a group. Um, only one table had it out, and if you wanted to go try to join that table, good luck finding a seat because it was packed. So, that's a lot of negatives. Um, well, I shouldn't say a lot of negatives, but that's my two biggest negative points about PAX East. So, when I said I got Saturday tickets and I thought that it was a blessing in disguise, well, no, it was a curse in disguise. You were better off going on Thursday because there was less people there. You are better off going on Friday... Actually, Friday might have sold out, so it might have been the same amount. Or Sunday, but that was less of a day. Um, I think they opened at 10 and closed at 7. All the cool stuff was going on Saturday. For example, one cool thing that they had was they had two um, game... They had a game night, quote-unquote, right? So they had... is uh, The Price is Right, and they had Supermarket Sweep, which... Anybody who knows me knows I love watching game shows. Unfortunately, I don't get the Game Show Network, but I love watching game shows. I actually DVR Wheel of Fortune, and my father-in-law made fun of me for that. But 
So the Price is Right was really, really cool, actually. Um, they did a really good job at that. However, there was hecklers in the audience, which is fine to some degree, but eventually it really just got annoying. Um, but that's not Paxi's fault, so I can't hold that against them. But the supermarket sweep, and it was their first year doing it, which is okay. It didn't go as smooth as possible. Um, what they did was they took a bunch of balloons, they blew them up, and they taped, you know, Xbox Live, or Xbox One controller, or, um, PlayStation 4, or Mega Man Legacy Collection, or things along the lines of that, and they had the audience hold them, and the two teams would run up and down the audience and grab these balloons and bring them back, and at the end they tallied them up. Honestly, it was rather cool. It just was poorly executed, um, but I'll cut them even some slack for that because it was poorly executed because it was the first year they were doing it, and hopefully next year it will be better. Um, they had a soundboard guy there, so you know as he was tallying up the values, he was hitting ka-ching, 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 and all these different sounds from the show and whatnot. And that was kind of a nice touch. The one thing that kind of aggravated me about that was actually the host somewhat. So the woman who put it together seemed really on edge. I don't know if she was having a bad day. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and assume she was having a bad day. Um, but she was actually kind of snapping at the people helping her quite a bit. And a little bit at the audience as well, and that kind of sucked the fun out of it. But, like I said, there was hecklers, so I can't complain about her snapping at the audience. But she just kind of had a negativity about her. Um, and for something that was supposed to be the highlight of PAX, because this was at, I think, 8 or 9 o'clock on Saturday night, I was a little surprised at that. But maybe she was tired. Um, so, another thing that I saw was a really cool talk about Christian NES cartridges that were basically not approved by Nintendo, and it was about these people who, they were probably about my age, 27 or so, maybe a little older and younger, and they started developing video games for Nintendo. Well, Nintendo Entertainment System, not Nintendo. Um, and they weren't approved by Nintendo. Well, they made one really good game. I don't recall what it was called. Um, and I mean really good in the sense of, you know, it was a good game to play, not that people necessarily knew it. And what they found out was there was a chip in the NES that checked to verify if it was a Nintendo-approved cartridge. Because Nintendo wanted to approve everything at this point. They wanted to make sure there was no swears. They wanted to make sure that there was no blood. Things along the lines of that. Well, they found out that if they sent a voltage spike to that chip, they'd fry the chip. And you could actually play any Nintendo game you wanted. So they did that on all of their cartridges, basically. And later on, they figured out, hey, what if we just reskin all of these games to be about religion? It's a whole market that no one's gotten into, and we could actually make quite a bit of money. Well, that's exactly what they did, was they reskinned them. I don't know about making quite a bit of money, but they reskinned the games. So, one game is Noah's Ark, and you're picking up the animals, and you're running down, and you're throwing them in the ark, and... Literally picking them up like Super Mario 2 and throwing them in the ark. Well, something that was really funny was this game was also reskinned to be about baby Moses and his mother getting him into the Nile. So you could throw the baby in the middle of the game, which was kind of hilarious. And this talk goes a little more in depth. Um, I'll put a link to the guy's information down below. I believe he has a book about this if you're interested more in it. But definitely if you see it there again, I would definitely take it. I'd definitely sit in on this uh, talk. In addition to that, there was also a talk about cosplay, which my wife wanted to go see. And I mean, I do a little bit of cosplay myself, but she's more into like the fabric and making 
things. And this was the first talk we went to in the morning. So we actually didn't wait in line for the expo hall, which was kind of nice. Um, I heard that that line can be pretty brutal. Well, the talk honestly was one of the best talks there. The person giving it was local. Um, hey, Missy. Minx the Seder was the person who gave the talk, and she did an amazing job. Definitely check out her stuff. She was willing to share everything with you that you wanted. In fact, we made a design as a group there, and what it was was she had a hat, and we pulled out a Pokemon from the hat, so we got Bulbasaur. And then someone else pulled out a job for Bulbasaur, which was a warrior. And she designed that on the fly, you know, hand sketched on her computer um, and with our input. So he had a leaf shield and a, a whip. It was really, really cool. And this woman was so nice to the point that someone went up to her and said, Hey, you know, I'm trying to break into cosplay. Can I use that? And she said, Hey, it's your design. It's the group's design. Of course you can use it. You don't have to ask my permission. And jokingly, she said, why don't you ask the group's permission? Um, and obviously everyone said, yeah, go for it. Um, she talked about, you know, using um, stale wire to make your wings in certain forms or your tails in certain forms. She talked about using... Um, couch foam to make a poofy tail if you wanted. She talked about stitching loops on your tail and just wearing a belt that's hidden in order to get a tail. She focused on a lot of these uh, animals. Um, she was big into Pokemon and I think that might have been why. She was wearing a Golbat Warrior costume which was pretty dope. Um, so I highly recommend her. If you ever get a chance to check her out, definitely do. She does some commission work. Um, mostly hoodies, she said, um, but she will do some more in-depth work over the summer, she said as well. So overall, PAX East, I saw some really, really cool stuff on the Expo floor. There was a gaming pod, which was not for sale, unfortunately, but it was really cool. It was this pod that you sat in, and you had your mouse, and you had your keyboard, and I'll show you a picture on the screen as well. And, you know, you're typing away and playing PUBG or whatever you want to play. Um, there was a lot of indie games, which was nice if you're into indie games. I find indie games aren't my... Most of them aren't in my taste. But if you like indie games and you're really into that, definitely go to PAX. There's a ton of indie games there. Um, there was a lot of selling of stuff, which I did not expect. A lot of boots selling things, such as headphones, Lucid Sounds was there, which I'm dying for the LS40s, and I have been itching so hard to get the LS40s, but I can't find them for a reasonable price. And they had them there, or I shouldn't say a reasonable price, but a price I can afford, because they're pretty reasonable on their price of $200, actually. Um... They had them there for $150, but they sold out, and I was so bummed. But I actually entered a competition. Unfortunately, I didn't win, but they were giving away LS30s and things like that. Um, you know, the big three were there. Blizzard had a huge, huge booth. Uh, that was cool. There was this game that was kind of a... Uh, I think it was called the Force Arena... Um, it was kind of looked like it was merged between Counter Strike and Halo. He does get shots on one. He, then he gets killed right away. But before that goes, this was a trade out, so our right team was able to trade out there and win the round. So it is tied 1 1 here in the arena, so the winner of this round will win our game. And that looked really, really cool, and I want to get my hands on that. There was another game called Death Garden, 
And I didn't get to play any of these because I was trying to cram PAX East all into one day, which was a really bad idea, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, there was a game called Death Garden, which the premise... So when I was there, I didn't really understand it. I was just watching, you know, real quick. These guys run through with bow and arrows through the woods looking for someone to hunt or something like that. Then I read about the premise, and the premise is really, really cool, actually. There's a guy in really big armor, and he's got, like, a machine gun or a shotgun or something along those lines. And he's really slow, but he's really strong, and he's attacking these four agile runners who don't have much armor and they have bow and arrows or whatever else and they're running through the forest and i think they're supposed to take him out and he's supposed to take them out really cool concept i am looking forward to that i just signed up for the um closed alpha test uh, i think it was the alpha and i'm hoping that i get an invite to that i'll put a link to that in the description below as well um what else was there? There was vendors who were selling D&D dice, and they were made out of stone, which was awesome, and I wanted them so bad, but I can't afford $200 or $100 for dice. Um, <laughs> that said, they had some dice from, you know, $15 up all the way up to, you know, $200, $400, whatever it was. They had some metal dice there. Um, there was another place that had wooden dice. They had wooden game tables. They, you get the idea. There was a lot of ability to buy things. So if you're into that, definitely check out PAX. If you're into testing indie games, check out PAX. If you enjoy panels talking about video games, talking about cosplay, just fun, crazy panels, you know, check out PAX. They had a concert there with my man D&D Sluggers who killed it. And that was awesome. And that was just this small, I was called um, NPC, Nerd People of Color. And the idea is that they want to get people of color up there performing for people. So they did this group called NPC. And they had their own little session where all these people went up and played. And D&D Sluggers was playing. I, it, I got cut off because I wanted to go see the game show and I had to get in line for that probably about a half hour to an hour early um which is key make sure you get in line if you really want to see something about an hour earlier but there was a Saturday night concert which I wanted to go to but my mom was watching my daughter all day and I didn't realize how late PAX East went when I first signed up so I felt bad and I wasn't feeling well so we ended up leaving but there was a concert there, and it was a bigger concert, and Super Soul Brothers played, and they're kind of like a jazz funk version of video game music, and that was really, really cool. I've checked them out. I've never seen them in person. I wish that I was feeling better, and I would have stayed to see them. Um, so you get the idea. There's a lot of stuff to do there. The only issue was that lines, the lines were brutal. And really, if you wanted to try games out, so if you are going to PAX East and weren't looking to necessarily try games out, but rather go to the panels, you can probably do it in one day. If you were going to PAX East and wanted to simply play board games, you probably could do it in one day if you wanted to. Um, I'd like to see them improve their looking for groups, but... That is what it is. If you're going to PAX East and just looking to do the expo floor and walk around the expo floor, probably like one day, day and a half. There's a lot to the expo floor. Oh, excuse me. There's a lot to the expo floor. I did not see most of the expo floor, unfortunately. I probably saw, I don't know, a third of it. Um, but what I did see, I was impressed with. Um... If you want to check out indie games, you can probably do that in one day. But overall, if you want the full experience of PAX East, I would suggest getting tickets for the whole weekend if you're out of town, getting a hotel, 
you know, doing that whole thing that people typically do for conventions. I live about 45 minutes out of Boston. Um, I grew up about 10 minutes outside of Boston, highway time. So if you really live locally and you want to do just the expo floor or just the panels, then get one day. I wouldn't suggest going for Saturday. It was just a little too busy for me. If you want to do everything, get multiple days. So, for example, I think next year what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Thursday, Friday set of tickets. I'm probably going to skip Saturday just because the lines were a little much for me. That said, getting in, everyone talks like getting in is a big deal. It's not. I showed up with my wife around, I don't know, 9 o'clock. I think, and I was inside, and they let us right in, they searched our bags or whatever and let us in, and we were just hanging out inside until stuff started opening, we actually walked around a little bit and found the first talk about the cosplay stuff and waited for that, um, but it really was not a big deal for getting in if you show up maybe like an hour early, and they let us right inside, I don't know if it was because it was cold out, um, but I didn't think it was too bad. I was wearing a sweatshirt and it was, you know, I also live around here, so I'm used to it. Um, but it wasn't too bad and they did have a coat check there. So if it is cold, you can check your coat. Um, it wasn't expensive. I think it was $3 or so, somewhere around there. It was definitely under 10. It was three. Make some noise, Parker. I just yelled Dilver. It was three. Um, but yeah, next year I'm definitely going to go again. I was really actually kind of depressed about this year. I got in the car and I looked at my wife and I said, I feel like I don't like PAX East. I'm not a gamer. And then I looked at her and I said, eh, screw that. I'm a gamer. What the hell am I saying? So overall, I would suggest going for at least two days. Um, and try to avoid Saturday. If you end up going for the whole weekend, just buy the Saturday tickets, guys. I mean, if you're going to be here, if you're traveling from out of state, just buy the Saturday tickets. What do you care? It's 50 bucks. I mean, so you don't buy a game that month, whatever. Um, but yeah, like I said, at first when I left and I gave you all the negatives up front, I think I was kind of down in the dumps, not as impressed. I actually posted to Facebook being like, Paxis is talked up. And I still stand by my post. I do think that Paxis is a little talked up. I expected way more games. I expected less vendors. But what they did well that they redeemed themselves in my eyes was the panels. The panels were done really well. I wish that I saw more panels and actually spent less time on the expo floor just because the lines were too long, but it was my first year, so I wanted to get the full experience. I was reading tips online. Like I said, this was my first year, and there wasn't much out there. So here's some tips. As much as it sucks, bring water. Then you don't have to buy stuff there. It sucks because it's heavy. We brought six waters, and we actually drank um, all six throughout the day. So that was three waters for me and three waters for my wife. Bring food. There are trucks that were outside. Actually, one of my friends had a truck, or one of my wife's friends, I should say. He's my friend too now, but had a truck outside. And, uh, hey, Missy, what's this truck called? Zenna Waffles. Zenna Waffles. Zenin Waffles, something like that. I'll put a link to his stuff in the description below. <laughs> I think he just got a storefront in uh, North Shore Mall. But is it North Shore Mall he got the storefront? Yeah, it was a little kiosk thing. Oh, he's got a kiosk. Um, so there was trucks outside. So you can go outside and get those trucks if you want. And they let you back in. It was pretty quick, actually. We went outside, grabbed some waffles from him, and... Um, you know, ate them there and then had our waters and went back inside. And no big deal. It was really quick, actually, to get in. Um, but if you don't want to do that, bring food. We packed peanut butter and jelly and some snacks, and nobody questioned us. Nobody cared. 
they just wanted to make sure that we weren't bringing in anything that would harm anybody, and that's about it. Go for multiple days. Do not think you can do this in one day. I made that mistake, and it kind of put a damper on me. Um, after I left, I had, you know, was kind of bummed about PAX East, and was almost contemplating not going back. And I'm glad that I waited a few days to do this review because I was ready to go on here and rant about how much I didn't like Paxis. When in reality, it was kind of my fault. It was designed to be a four day con and we tried to do it in one day, which was a terrible, terrible idea. Um, Panels. Check out the panels if you're a first time Paxis. As much as you don't want to and you think that it's going to be dumb, the panels were great. The panels were probably the highlight of the weekend for me. Go with someone who enjoys similar things. Now, I like board games. My wife loves board games. I love video games. My wife likes video games. That made it hard at some times. You know, she wanted to wait around for a game. I was getting frustrated thinking I was wasting my 50 bucks waiting around for this group. And they made it really hard for us to find groups. But if I went with someone who loved video games or I went with someone who loved board games, then I wouldn't have minded, you know, she could have gone off with the person who loved the board games and hung around and waited a little bit longer. I could have jumped in line with someone who loved video games and waited in line a little bit longer. Um... But that said, if I did a couple days, I would not have minded to, I would not have mind, minded, waiting in line a little bit longer. Um, so those are my highlights. Oh, and parking. Use Spot Harrow for parking. You're guaranteed a spot. And they had shuttles going from our parking garage to Pax East, actually. So we paid $18. I think that day was about 20 So we got a little bit of a discount, not too much. But we were guaranteed parking, and we knew exactly where we were going for the parking. And we could have walked to Pax East if we wanted. I think it was half a mile walk, which you're walking around the con. What the hell do you care? So overall, do I recommend Pax East? Yes. Do I recommend doing it in one day? No. <laughs> Definitely two days or more. Um, try to avoid Saturdays if you're local. I know that a lot of people just go on Saturday because you have the day off. But try to avoid Saturdays if you're local. Um, they have music. They have panels. They have the expo. They have the ability to sit down and play games. And you can also buy stuff while in the expo. So on that note, I'm Rich Pollution signing off. Please remember to like and subscribe and be excellent to each other. Let me know in the comments down below if you went to PAX East. What was your highlight of PAX East 2018? And do you have any suggestions for me where I will be going back next year? And you're going in my vlog. We're at a PAX East convention, and my wife is talking about fried dough. <laughs> so good. Anywhere. <laughs> All right.